This meeting is being recorded. This meeting is being recorded. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, 606, calling the April meeting of the Advisory Military Veterans Liaison Committee uh, to order. Uh, we're going to do a quick Pledge of Allegiance. My handy flag is right up here. Hang on. There we go. It's backwards, but uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the Republic, for which it stands, one nation under God, individual, individual. liberty, and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I do understand we have one person from the public on. Uh, they are up next, Chuck Crewald. You're out there. Introduce yourself. I don't see him, uh, Irene, so. Oh, oh, there I see he is. Him. You have to unmute Chuck. <laughs> no. Chuck. You're muted. No, I was listening to a radio station. I had to take my wife to LaGuardia this morning, very early in the morning. And they're, they go off to commercial and nothing on the radio station. And I just thought every minute that goes by, they're losing money. You know, where there should have been an ad, there wasn't one. Dead air, as they say. Uh, he had trouble. He looks like he left. Maybe yeah. he's got to sign back in. That could be. Ah. Paging Chuck Crewald. Unmute yourself. Raise your hand. Uh, I'm going to text Chuck. I have a cell phone. Yep. Okay. I'm about to call on myself. Good job. Oh, okay. There you go. So I'll do it. I'm going to mute myself so this doesn't end up on the official okay. record. When I right. give him grief for not, you know. I'm going to stop recording. Okay. And uh, I see you. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. How about a short introduction, Chuck, your uh, military background, that sort of thing? Yes, I'm former military. I'm not retired. <clears throat> I was in the uh, Provost Marshal Military Police Investigation Division. Um, <clears throat> spent a year over in Vietnam with the 3rd Brigade Task Force 25th Infantry Division. I came out and I was, out, I was grabbed by a number of security organizations. I went to work for them. Uh, I ended up with the Pinkertons, and, uh, which still exists today, and doing uh, background investigations, surveillances, things of that nature. That's my short bio right now. Well, welcome. And thank uh, you, sir. So the, the floor is yours. Uh, you joined us. Did you have something on your mind or you wanted to sit in on the meeting? What's on I just mind? wanted to sit in on the meeting and, and see how uh, this organization operates. I know uh, you talk about it once in a while at our meetings with the VFW. And um, I know there's a lot of things going on at Veterans Park. Uh, I'm very heavily involved with that Oyster Festival. And um, I do a lot of the security operations down there for them. And I just wanted to get a background of the uh, the Purple Heart the, the monument that you're working on and the wall that's going to be coming to Norwalk down at Veterans Park. Two big events. Those are the actually the, probably the two biggest of the year. Um, so without further ado, we're going to push on. Um, Irene, we're going to let Chuck sit in on the rest of the meeting here. And, uh, and Chuck, please give some consideration to filling one of the uh, vacant at-large veteran positions on the committee. Um, actually, we just got told uh, that Orlando Aquino, who you might see on the screen, his name there, uh, he needs to step down on Friday. So um, I don't know if he's actually stepping down, but he's leaving the community health center, which kind of leaves a vacancy in the health uh, realm. But uh, needless to say, moving on, I've done a roll call. 
um, uh, based on who's on the screen. We have a few people that couldn't make it tonight, and that's okay. Uh, next up on the agenda is uh, committee chairman comments. Um, I have nothing specific right now. And I think a lot of um, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling about what's coming up this year will come out in the various uh, uh, items we have on the agenda under old and new business. So uh, without further ado, just cover real quick. The uh, Veterans Resource Directory was mailed out. Um, uh, we did get some back. Um, Irene's got some in her office that I'm going to get from her tomorrow morning and put them in the American Legion. Um, so when people show up there uh, and maybe they're not familiar with what their benefits are in Norwalk, and even if they don't live in Norwalk, there's plenty of good information in that uh, guide that can help you with all sorts of things. So uh, moving on from there, um, under old business, we still have an open item for uh, uh, military and veteran registry. Um, the state of Pennsylvania has a registry for all veterans, and it, it's a method to stay in touch with them statewide. And I, I want to implement something like that in Norwalk. Um, it, in order to spread the word about activities and, and, and benefits and uh, anything that comes up that impacts the veteran community and those that are still serving in the Guard and the Reserves, because that is a piece of what this committee um, is in, uh, chartered to do. So uh, I sent uh, an email off to the IT department. They're pretty swamped lately. So um, I'm having, I'm like a doctor. I have patience. So I have patience on this one and we'll get there. And I, and I know that uh, those that um, um, have the wherewithal and the skills to create a web-based registry where we know our veterans where our veterans are and uh, and those still serving, uh, that's going to happen in the future, and this is going to stay on the agenda. And um, I'll beat my drum every meeting till this happens. Uh, it's important um, that we know where they are. And uh, so moving on, um, we kind of pass the baton here. I had a very nice meeting with uh, Brian Griffin and Paulo Barros, who's on the call here. Uh, at the Chamber of Commerce um, about our relationship with uh, veteran-owned businesses and and kind of the future and finally got to meet Paul in person and he got to feel me on uh, my passion about this topic and uh, that sort of thing. So Paul, all yours. Tell us all about it. Uh, great meeting. Great, great to meet Jeff in person for sure. Uh, we talked about how can we, how can the chamber and the uh, veterans committee come together a little bit closer? And um, we talked about emailing the uh, form again, so we can get more, more businesses uh, to respond. Um, I'm also going to uh, be visiting these businesses that respond to the ones that are, we already have, um, that have registered, I want to go go visit them and, and introduce myself and introduce the committee to them. Um, after that, once we get some responses, I will keep visiting as well. And um, another idea that I had was, you know, the chamber has breakfasts, uh, business breakfasts and business after hours. I was also thinking of having, because we do have, <clears throat> um, excuse me, I was thinking of having um, that being done um, with our committee and businesses that are registered as veteran owned businesses. Um, so that we can get together, we can, we can talk, we can just, um, you know, get to know, get to know our, our, our veterans and get to know our, our veteran owned businesses in the, in the town. And yeah. And then that's, that's, that's what, that was the bulk of, of what we discussed. Correct, Jeff? Yes, definitely. And, and kind of some offshoots of that too would be um, how each of you got into business, what you use for your resources for funding, who you use for advertising, marketing, right. this kind of, and start doing this on, on uh, you know, maybe share uh, expenses and that sort of thing on this. And then growth, that's the big piece of this is to make oh. Norwalk uh, an attractive place for a veteran to open a business or to expand a business. Say they have a print shop in Danbury, but they want that low, lower Fairfield County Gold Coast piece of the business. Mm -hmm. um, what, what can we do to help them get off the ground? And then another thing I talked about at the end of the meeting that uh, 
this is kind of far reaching, but to get commercial real estate in Norwalk on board with uh, new businesses owned by veterans, maybe a, a little break on their rent for the first six months, that sort of thing. Um, I know up in my neck of the woods in Cranberry, uh, there was a flower shop that moved out. It's still vacant. Great spot, great section of town. Uh, there's a grocery store, liquor store, and a bank right in that strip. So you're going to get all kinds of people from this area here. And that might be a good spot for somebody uh, to start a business. But would that realtor allow for, you know, say a 10% break on the rent for the first six mm -hmm. months to allow a veteran to get off the, you know, um, get on the feet? So, um, so I, this can go in a lot of different directions. And I'll let you go ahead. Sorry, Paul. I, I spoke to uh, the principal of our company, um, Winthrop Baum, who owns 25 Van Zant, And I, I uh, talked to him about that specific topic about having a break on, on veteran owned businesses. And, you know, he, uh, we, we've partnered, we part, re recently partnered with the business, but when he hired me, um, he was all about just hiring veterans and he is definitely on board with being able to help out veterans um, come over to, to Norwalk, start a business and, you know, 25 Van Zant's full of, uh, of uh, open spaces. And if you guys know any veterans there, Winthrop Bound is definitely on board with, with uh, rent breaks um, for, for veteran owned businesses. It's great news and good work there and keep uh, beating the pavement on that. I mean, how many others would line up if, if, you know, if the pitch is right and just let them know that this is, uh, right. this is going to help the city from an, like, again, is from an economic development standpoint to make a Norwalk attractive to open a business period, but to attract veteran owned businesses is really our niche and what we're trying to do to, uh, um, you know, make Norwalk attractive and mm -hmm. I keep saying the same thing again, but, um, anything else on that? No, no, I'm all, I'm all set. Um, the registry. So uh, what came out of that meeting, actually the first deliverable out of that, which I delivered within an hour after the meeting was over, um, mm -hmm. was to retool the, uh, the application or, or the registration form. Um, there were some things that uh, Brian uh, from Chamber of Commerce wanted to see on there. And so I, I just changed some of the language on there. I sent the links back out again sent a link to the spreadsheet that anytime anybody fills out the form and clicks submit, it automatically enters their information in the spreadsheet. So you have an instant way to, to find out uh, who's new out there. And from a social aspect, I mean, uh, word of mouth and meeting people is the best way to do business. And this idea of having a, a breakfast or an after hours, or expanding a meeting, or, or maybe have just the, the, your first meeting of uh, veteran-owned businesses are going to meet a half hour before the regularly scheduled meeting. Just show up and uh, sign a registry. You know, you know, log in. Let us know you're there, and then st stick around for the bigger meeting. I think uh, something like that. Good place to start, at least. And uh, uh, thanks for being on board, Paul. Good work so far. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Um, Next up is the Veterans Memorial uh, Subcommittee. A uh, lot going on there, a lot of planning for different things. Um, I am uh, nearly done with planning the Veterans Memorial Ceremony, um, which if you see in the minutes, there's a calendar at the end, but I'll talk about it specifically for the recording here. Um, on May 15th, Sunday, May 15th, on the third Sunday of May every year uh, at 12.30 at the Shea McGrath and Wall Remembrance Memorial at Calf Pasture Beach will be a Veterans Memorial Ceremony. The first half hour from 1230 to one o'clock is a concert by Norwalk Symphony Brass Ensemble, about five musicians. Uh, we're also gonna have a vocalist from the Norwalk Symphony uh, perform this uh, national anthem as well. And at one o'clock is a formal portion of the ceremony. Uh, you know, we'll do the national anthem, we'll post the colors, um, I have two clergy coming in for this, one for the invocation, one for the benediction um, from around town. And we like to change that out because uh, we want to give everybody an opportunity to come out and, uh, and uh, pray for the veterans. And then uh, we are going to drop a wreath in Long Island Sound. And I read an article and I'm going to 
say more about this um, through Nancy, I know all places like that, but this, this piece of the ceremony where a biodegradable wreath is dropped in Long Island Sound to honor those that were lost at sea goes <clears> back <throat> to the 1920s in Norwalk. I found a newspaper article. <clears throat> and so we're just keeping that tradition alive. And, uh, and, it, and, it, and we do it during the Navy hymn when the Navy hymn is played. And, uh, and it's not just Navy personnel. Uh, from all branches, um, Army, Air Force, especially in World War II, crashing at sea all over the world, and then uh, Coast Guard, Navy, Merchant Marines. Uh, we're going to actually, uh, part of the Veterans Sub uh, Memorial Subcommittee, one of their new business items, which we closed already, was to make the Merchant Marine flag a part of the parade of flags. So we have a flag for every branch of service, including the new branch on uh, the Space Force, and we're going to add the mo um the Merchant Marines into that as well. Uh, their logo is on the fence at uh, the Shea McGrath Memorial, and uh, but their flag's not represented. So somebody on the committee uh, made a motion to uh, change that, and uh, that's been approved. So that's May 15th. And then uh, earlier that morning, uh, if anybody hasn't visited the cemeteries around town where some of our veterans are buried, um, cemetery visits start at 10 o'clock at City Hall. Uh, a short ceremony and prayer is read, taps is played, and if the flag at City Hall needs to be changed, we change it. Probably won't need to be changed because I think uh, the folks that keep an eye on the building over there are, um, have done that. And then uh, the group is, the, the crowd is split into two groups and group A, group B, and each group hits different cemeteries around town. If the main flag in a cemetery needs to be changed, they have a supply that they take with them, a prayer is read, taps is played, and they move on to the next one. And both groups end up at the Veterans Memorial Ceremony. So they start at 10, they're done usually by noon, and then they're down at the Cat Pasture to, to enjoy the Veterans Memorial Ceremony. Again, a tradition that goes back typically on Memorial Day weekend, but uh, that's jam packed with all sorts of things. So somewhere in the history of the, the Memorial Committee, that's been backed up to the, the third Sunday in May. and uh, I like it on the calendar because uh, it's always going to be there and it's always something the city's going to do. And uh, we just want more people to come out. And we got the city, I don't know who went last year, but uh, it was a little bit of a snafu and, you know, I'll, I'll take the, the darts and arrows on this, but uh, uh, some people got a parking ticket that weren't from Norwalk. And so we're, we uh, took steps to make sure it doesn't happen this year. And I got confirmation of that um, just yesterday. So um Moving on. Oh, no. Nope. Staying on the Veterans Memorial Subcommittee. Uh, they have added uh, three events to their calendar of uh, honors that they're going to pay throughout the year. Um, and I'll just talk about the first one. And it's on June 6th, a, a D Day commemoration. And for those that don't know, uh, three Norwalkers lost their lives in the uh, landing in Normandy. And so we're going to read their bios and uh, we're going to try to find some surviving family members as well um and just commemorate the fact that that was the first day of the beginning of the end of world war ii if you ask me um and uh big day in the united states history and you know, we really haven't done anything about that to educate the public and uh this committee is gonna push that and make sure that uh, we get the word out and educate people um if we take a step back for a second you were talking about the mate the mate Thing for the celebration at the cemeteries. Yeah. When I was in the garden in the 60s, late 60s, mm -hmm. uh, I was always selected for those special events. And uh, a squad of us was sent out to the various cemeteries and we uh, basically do a gun salute. Same thing yeah. except with the guns. It's a, the it's rifles, a nice touch. Yeah. Um, I'll talk about a project. Uh, you know, something else I'm working on uh, through um, another committee. But uh, so it's my wish, hope, and desire to have the grave site of every Norwalk resident buried in Norwalk who died during wartime service to have a permanent metal flag holder at their grave site that doesn't get run over by lawnmowers and that sort of thing. And we started at Riverside. And those flags are in place now. And Riverside actually has a Medal of Honor recipient 
uh, John McGrath and uh, uh, myself and uh, Mike Purdy, who is part of the family that owns that cemetery, um, went out there with a list and uh, the, the metal holders were purchased probably six months ago. We finally got our act together, let the ground thaw a little bit and got out there and did that uh, two, three weeks ago now. And so that's my goal to do that around town. And that's a kind of a throwback to your comment, Leon, is that, again, numerous articles in the annals of Noak Hour going back decades of there being some sort of ceremony or laying of wreaths in the main cemeteries in Norwalk. And it doesn't get done on Memorial Day anymore, but I know that on the uh, the Sunday following the Veterans Memorial Ceremony at St. John's, there's an event there sponsored by King Industries in Norwalk where they pass out flags to uh, mark the graves of any veteran buried in St. John's. And then there's enough extra where if you want to take a couple boxes, there's a Jewish cemetery directly across the street, like four or five there. And then next door to St. John's, there's another Jewish cemetery. And uh, some people take some and go to Riverside and just find, um, you know, the typical markings uh, for a veteran, the family will have a headstone with the last name and the wife and the, and then the VA footstone is where these flags get planted um, uh, the weekend before Memorial Day. And then the cemeteries typically pull them two or three weeks later and then let the lawnmowers through. Um, it's not a good idea to leave those up year round. Uh, they get tattered and torn and nobody likes to see a flag in rough conditions. So I'm not sure if I answered your question or, or addressed it. No, no, I just, I, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it. That's what we used, uh, we used, used to happen. You know, um, a color guard uh, that practices and marches well, left face, fire, aim, fire, that whole thing does not exist in town except for the North Police Department. And that's it. Veteran yeah, organizations yeah. are aging and it's just not anything that anybody's thinking about right now. So, Well, this used to be the National Guard. Oh, oh right. Okay, right. Maybe we'll be, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's when you, you couldn't throw a stick and not hit somebody in a guard in North Hawk <laughs> a few years back, but, um, you know, not the case anymore. So, yeah, um, more of that type of thing, I think, is necessary to educate kids um, who may not be getting it in school. And just a reminder that uh, this is a great country because of some sacrifices that some heroes have paid. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, moving on to the next item on the agenda is the Purple Heart Monument. Uh, late development uh, two weeks ago or so, the company that has the contract for this. Um, we went out, we got three bids. Um, Recreation and Parks budget is paying for this. They're the ones that picked the uh, vendor who's uh, in Connecticut, came out to see the site firsthand. I sent a map, you know, an aerial map of uh, where we wanted the monument and he saw it for the first time. Um, a little concern there is that uh, he said the stone for the monument is coming from India. So all I know is that the supply chain issues with container ships in the Pacific, trying to get into LA and that sort of thing, where is my stone? I have no idea. And uh, eventually they'll get it and uh, they'll carve it to our specs. And uh, when that is ready to be installed, um, we'll have a, um, a rollout ceremony of sorts and invite as many family and, uh, and recipients as possible down to Vets Park. Uh, to unveil that. Um, and that's where we're at. Our stone is on a ship in the Pacific Ocean. That's about all I know, but that's the update I have on that. Um, next up on the agenda, and I'm going to close this uh, today, actually. Um, spoken about it before. Uh, there were two names missing from the Vietnam plaque at the Shea McGrath Memorial on the side that faces the water. That's where our World War II Vietnam and Korean plaques are. Um, there were two names missing because when that plaque was made, they were MIA and nobody knew whether they were still prisoners or not. And uh, good on Norwalk for pressing on way back in 1971 and getting that plaque hung. Um, so the remains were identified on one in 1999 and the other in 04. 
And so those two names are an addendum plaque now underneath the Vietnam plaque. Um, there are no living family members in the United States of one of the names. And uh, the other who was shot down in Laos during the Vietnam War uh, does have family members. And I wanted to do a formal unveiling of this addendum plaque, but instead I'm gonna invite the family to the Veterans Memorial Ceremony and make that a piece of that ceremony to let the public know when the ceremony is done, come back, come back around the backside of the monument and on the side that faces the water and take a look at these two new names that are heroes that um, the, the guy got shot down in Vietnam. He went to Norwalk High School. He was on the golf team junior senior year. Uh, went off and uh, got his commission, and he was fined single seaters in 1965, I believe. He was shot down in Laos, and uh, wow. yeah, uh, lived right well in the neighborhood on the east east of Stu Leonard's, up Dry Hill Road, if you know that. He lived off one of those streets up there. So, and he's Air Force, so that means something to me. So, but anyway, I had to go there. I'm going to close that and uh, just make that a part of the. Uh, a veterans memorial ceremony on may 15th um future monuments in veterans park uh fred Wilms is not on the call was not able to make it um he is looking into um th and this came up under new business at our last meeting there is a monument on the corner of uh martin luther king drive and and like Washington Street, Fairfield Avenue, where all those five roads, Flax Hill, Couch Street, all come in. <clears throat> monument right there um, for the Civil War um, veterans. And and he felt it was unkempt and he wants to look into who's responsible for that, that lot. And um, I think that they went to a thing where they wanted wildflowers to grow there to help pollinate the neighborhood or something, but I'm not really sure. And Fred's going to look into that. And then... Uh, on the off chance that possibly we could move that to Veterans Park, um, he's going to look into what that would take, and that's probably going to be expensive. But um, so right now, that's the only plans we have about future mon monuments in Veterans Park. Uh, next up on the agenda is the Wall that Heals. Planning is going very well. Um, we have a contractor that's going to do the electric. Uh, they provided an invoice already. Uh, we do have some donations already, which is great. I just got another one today from Rex Marine. Um, and uh, volunteers are still needed. Uh, in the minutes of this, um, for this meeting, I'm going to put the links to sign up to volunteer. Uh, it's two-hour shifts. Paolo, I know you already signed up. I signed up also. I'm going to take on more. I just wanted to see what the initial reaction would be. And of the amount of time slots to sign up for, only 25% are filled right now. I'm not worried about it yet. Um, people typically like to wait to the last minute uh, for anything, and it's just a human nature thing, and I don't mind at all. But uh, um, yeah, so uh, the trailer is going to arrive on uh, May 31st, uh, so the day after Memorial Day, um, with some pomp and circumstance led by 250 plus motorcycles. They're going to ride into uh, Veterans Park at roughly 2 33 o'clock on May 31st. Um, the committee that uh, is rolling this out are going to get uh, little American flags and and the route that the truck takes, we're going to hit the businesses and homes and schools and firehouses along the way with flags to stand out in front and wave while the flag goes by. We already got a confirmation from the Norwalk High School principal that he's going to involve the school somehow in that. And uh, the truck also goes by the American Legion, Narimac Elementary, Nathan L. Middle School, the firehouse on Van Zant. Uh, so there's lots of opportunity to really roll out the red carpet. And, and the agency that owns the Wally Hills wants to see this in every town that the truck shows up in. So uh, we're going to make that happen. And uh, so that's the 31st. On the 1st is Assembly Day. Uh, the Norwalk Exchange Club has taken on the responsibility of, of assembly and disassembly. Uh, led by Bill Solder and, and crew, and I appreciate their effort there. And um, so that's going to start in the morning, and then volunteer training happens that same day at 6 o'clock, mandatory volunteer training. So, Paolo, you and I have to be there because um, I know we signed up already. 
Um, and that's going to be basically the agency that owns the wall of heels is going to tell us how to interact with the public. Um, some statistics to tell people, you know, there's eight women on the wall, there's chaplains on the wall, there's, uh, they come from all 50 states. And I mean, I could go on. There's a lot of detail going into this. We're going to do um, uh, two or three things that are going to be neat. We're going to do taps, uh, play taps at five o'clock every night, except for Sunday, because the wall will be coming down at two on Sunday. We're going to do a candlelight vigil on Friday night at 9.30. Uh, we're going to do a parade of wreaths for um, fraternal organizations or any organization. Say the police department wants to lay a wreath at the, the wall that heals. This is going to be the time and I'll get the word out and we'll just line them up and do wreath after wreath. And we'll have a mic and a PA and announce who's laying the wreath. And uh, they can pause, say a prayer or two and move on. And uh, so there'll be that. And then... Um, what else? There's one other thing that's stuck in my mind. Paul, do you yeah. have something? Yeah. Yes. Uh, are we having an opening ceremony or anything? No, for yeah. Thanks, thanks for that. Yeah. Um, so the opening ceremony is at six o'clock on Thursday the second, um, okay. and the mayor will be there for that one. And uh, the Norwalk High School band is uh, committed to playing the medley of service songs and probably the national anthem at that as well. Um, and then the closing ceremony is at one o'clock on June 5th. And I'll put some of that in the minutes as well. So that gets out to the public. So we, this recording and the minutes get published on the Norwalk webpage. So um, gives you know, the public a place to go and see what we're up to. And, do, we uh, have, do we have a color guard for that or do, or do we, uh, do we no, have a color guard for that or no? Yeah, we use the North Police Department for Veterans Day. And uh, okay. when I asked, they, they want this. They want okay. to do this in a big way. So right. yeah, and, uh, they'll retire the colors at the, uh, at the end, at the closing ceremony on the 5th. So uh, they're a good group of guys. And um, uh, it's an honor for them to do this sort of thing. And believe it or not, of the 200 something uh, police officers in Norwalk, uh, I think they have 60 veterans. <clears throat> yeah. Matter of fact, the, uh, the assistant chief, Susan Zecca, uh, United States Marine Corps Reserve veteran. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Cool. Um, so that's it on that. And, and that's a, you know, I'm starting to use the lingo. This is the national tour of the well that heals, and Norwalk is on that tour. Yeah. And um, that kind of opens some people's eyes, you know, and some really. And so with the minutes, I'm going to send out the poster, the official poster. Um, it's, it's graphics and color heavy. So printing at home is probably going to suck dry all your ink. So what I'm going to do is find, find a time. <laughs> there's a, yeah. There's a lot of black and blue. And when you print, I mean, that's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to send this over to Staples or Miniman Press on Main Avenue has been a, um, a friend of the veterans committee in town. So uh, send it to one of them and get a couple hundred made. I already got, uh, somebody sent me a Facebook message to, uh, uh, from Stanford that wants to post them around Stanford. So I'll, I'll get that guy 50 of them, you know, and he'll get three of his closest friends to put it out. And I actually have a, um, two things I've done to get the word out. And this was uh, something that we spoke about under the good of, or, good of the order of the last meeting is communication and how best to, uh, to reach as many people as you can. And, and it takes a lot of effort. It's not putting anything in the newspaper anymore. I mean, that does reach a certain segment of, of society. But uh, um, so the Republican Town Committee, Democratic Town Committee, they'll, they've both been uh, contacted. Nancy on Norwalk's been contacted. She's uh, uh, kind of a a news blogger of sorts and mm -hmm. has uh, some reach and a following. And uh, so anybody like that, um, we're sending it out to them. And then, uh, so the two lists that I put together, um, email lists are every fraternal organization in Norwalk. So that's uh, Exchange, Lions, Kiwanis, VFW, American Legion, Knights of Columbus, the Masons. Um, we all had an event in December and I took email addresses. And uh, I use that now to get the word out about anything veteran related, uh, because they'll just forward it out to their membership. And these are people that live right here in Norwalk. So that's helpful. And then uh, 
kind of a, a wider reach. Uh, I called every city in the county and I wanted their Jeff DeWitt. Who runs your Veterans Council? Who's the chairman? Who runs your Veterans Day? Who runs Memorial Day? I need people like that. Send me an email address and I'll put together an email group, which I've done. Um, I had one city that took a little while to get back to me and finally did. And I'm not going to name names or whatever, but uh, now I have, I have one belly button to push in every town and I keep forwarding them stuff and, and how to sign up, how to donate um, the timeline. And I just keep beating it and beating it until they, you know, and, and the, my guidance is local government, your mayor, your selectmen, councilmen, whatever the lingo is in your town, uh, your boards of education, your veterans organizations, grocery stores, hang a poster. And, and that's how the word gets out. And that's going to make traffic on East Avenue awful, but for a good reason. <laughs> anyway, um, that is the last item under old business. Um, I already addressed um, the Civil War monument. And so we're now on new business. Do we have any new business? Only once. Having heard none, moving on to the next agenda item, which is good of the order. Uh, we talked about, uh, from the last meeting, again, we talked about just uh, how to raise awareness for veteran-related issues, patriotic-related issues. This is not about veterans. These are about uh, major events in the country's history that we have to carry the torch for. Um, so with that, uh, Chuck Crewald, I know you're on a call. You and I have spoken uh, personally about a couple of ideas that you have. Do you want to talk about that now or do you want to save it for another meeting? Let's save it for another meeting. All right. Do you want to join this committee? Uh, we do have a, a couple of vacancies in the veteran at large category. All right. Yes. Can I talk to someone else? I did respond to your um Facebook request. Okay. Oh, the Facebook group. Yeah, you put something out that you were looking for people. Yes, and uh, uh, not for, I didn't put anything out about looking for people for this committee. I was looking for well, a couple things. I was looking for motorcycle riders to be the escort for the Wall of Heels, and I was also looking for uh, volunteers to work at uh, Veterans Park. Uh, and it's not working. It's volunteering at the Wall of Heels right. at Veterans Park. And uh, so those two things, if you want to get involved in that, that's great. Mm. And, uh, yes. and if you want to be a part of the committee, I'll show you the secret handshake later. And okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the thing. No, not really. But um, no, uh, glad to have you on board, Chuck. Uh, if there's anybody that I've become familiar with through uh, uh, the work I do in the Legion and the VFW in town, it's you. And uh, mm. You're, you're very involved in the community, uh, North Sea Port Association member for a long time and kind of a head honcho with a radio on your belt during the Oyster Festival. So I know you're the man that gets things done and you are more than welcome, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, go around the board real quick. Leon, anything else to add there, sir? Nothing, but I do have to talk to you about uh, the May 6th thing. Uh, this, now's not the time. Okay. Uh, Presentation to uh, the Lifetime Learners Institute. Sure. I will, um, I will call you tomorrow. How's that sound? Um, depends what time. Uh, in the morning, I, I'm going to have to, I'm taking my sister to the doctor. So the don't call them. For me either. So it'll be afternoon then. Okay. That'd be fine. And yes, I have a note for my day tomorrow. Got a lot of things going. We'll call Leon in the afternoon. See, that's how these things happen. All uh, right, um, Orlando. Yes. So You're not driving a anymore. couple things. Uh, a couple things. Yeah. So I am going to be staying in Norwalk and working in Norwalk. So if the committee is okay, I'll be more than happy to stay on on board. Uh, the the other thing is that uh, I was just uh, thinking about you know you were looking at the honor guard and and whatnot. Uh, there is a, a recruiting company with active duty soldiers in, uh, in New Haven. I have, mm -hmm. uh, I know they're training, I know they're training NCO and, uh, 
and I know they will look for any opportunity to be able to be out in the community uh, to be to bring awareness for and and that recruiting us aspect. So um, if there's something that uh, that we can get them involved, I don't think that we will have a problem by getting some of those soldiers involved and in, in coming out. And be, they cover they cover half the state. My wheels are turning. They're in trouble now. <laughs> I'm no, telling and, uh, you. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. and I don't know, it's, I, it's, it's something that, uh, and you're talking about patriotism and all that. So Jeff, uh, I was reading an a, a article in, on LinkedIn and, uh, and the tradition of, you know, serving because my dad served, because my grandfather served, is being lost, is being lost. There's not a sense of patriotism. It, it, uh, recruiting efforts are, are re- they're, they, they're struggling. I was a recruiter for 12, for 12 years from basic recruiting to recruiting operations. And, uh, mm-hmm. and when I was there, and that's, that was 11 years ago. And uh, so, and, it's, and, it's, and it was tough then. Imagine now, uh, new generation, they, it's that disconnect. So uh, like I said, I think if we can, re- if we reach out to them, uh, we won't have a problem by, uh, you know, getting support. Thanks, and that reminds me, and to kind of spread the love, uh, there is a, Marine Corps recruiting office somewhere near here, and they've come to a couple of things at the American Legion. So I need to engage them, especially with the Wall of Hills. They'd be great people to have down there as uh, kind of ambassadors for, uh, you know, they can't set up a recruiting booth, but, you know, come down and pull a shift and uh, and really feel uh, the wall. You know, if you haven't been, I've been to the one in DC and it's a, uh, it's, it's moving. It's when you get right up there and it's nothing but names in your entire peripheral vision. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, and the one in Washington has the directory, so you can look somebody up and, and you'll be able to find it on the wall. Is, is, does the traveling wall have anything like that? Boom. Tap. Yeah, I know you were saying for uh, veterans in this area. I didn't know if they, it was the same one. No, this is the app for the wall in D.C. Okay. That, that the wall that heals uses the same app. Why well, duplicate what already works? So, um, yeah. you know, I'm going to put the app info in the minutes also. The irony was when I was down there in Washington, the, the wall that heals uh, down there, um, it was Memorial Day weekend and the motorcycle parade was going around. You so know, it's apropos. In, in my lifetime, in the... Uh, not a lot of old timers on this committee, but uh, I know Irene and Leon remember Don Overton. Yeah. So Don Overton uh, was blinded in Desert Storm One. Um, and he, uh, he did some great veteran work in Florida and ended up moving to Norwalk back to his hometown, uh, graduated from Norwalk High School and, and was on the cusp of doing some great things in Norwalk and got a job offer. Um, in Washington, D.C. for the Blinded Veterans of America. <laughs> and he is now the uh, chairman and CEO of the Blinded Veterans of America. And he told me, to your point, Leon, about Memorial Day in D.C., anytime you want to come down for the wreath laying on Memorial Day, let me know, and I'll get you in front row. Wow. Can't turn that down. I, at some okay. point in my life, I'm going to do that. Um, you know, that's... Uh, that's a sacred place. That's a uh, holy ground, Arlington. So, yeah, I must make that a, a mission of mine. And uh, and uh, Don was doing the back and forth on a train, and it, he has sold his house in Norwalk, and his whole family is down there in D.C. now. So, uh, wow. we'll miss Don and, and his dog, uh, who I liked more than him. <laughs> but anyway, um with nothing else, uh, it is 652. Wow, under an hour, good job. Um, I want to thank you all for being here. Look for my minutes. I'm trying to cut down on the amount of minutes. You know, I don't want to, people look at it five pages. I don't want to read five pages. So I'm going to keep my comments short and sweet, but I, it is a responsibility to document the activities of this committee, and, uh, and I'm going to continue doing that. Um, between now and the next time we meet, uh, let me look at. Uh, when our next meeting is, so I can put that out there now. Yeah, so our next meeting is May 9th. So between now and then, 
uh, flag ceremony. If you have not been to the Veteran of the Month flag raising ceremony at the American Legion on the first Sunday of every month, make it a point. It's 11 a.m. and it lasts about a half hour. Uh, our honoree in April um, kind of he filled every box you can imagine. Uh, he was a POW in Stalag 6G in Germany. And the day he was captured, he tried to escape and was shot in the back. Mm. So he's a Purple Heart recipient and he was a POW. And in the history of Norwalk, there are not many people that fill those, those two categories simultaneously. And uh, Joseph Ragusio was his name and uh, he was honored. The flag will come down on 1st of May and be presented to Joseph's family. Um, and on May 1st, I'm, not, I'm gonna make it come to hear about who it is. Uh, but believe it or not, we have only have one vacancy left this year and that's in November. And I've already got somebody interested in May, 2023. It's a good problem to have. And uh, uh, it used to be a scramble to find people, but luckily I'm meeting families that really wanna do this, um, especially for their grandkids. That's where it's at now, where uh, um, Joseph Ragusio has been dead for 30 years, but he had family drive in from New Jersey for this. Um, and, you know, his surviving daughter said if, if he looked down and saw these people here, he wouldn't believe it. And he was one of those that never talk about his service. And uh, uh, they only found out about some of it after he died and went through his folders of military documents. So... Um, the greatest generation, and we have to continue to honor, mm -hmm. honor them. And uh, it's a mission of mine. I know that. Uh, I hope it is yours too. So, any final parting comments, Irene Dixon? Anything? Uh, nothing for me, but great job, Jeff. Um, right. That's very inspiring. What you just uh, shared about the veteran of the month, because I know mm -hmm. I was involved when we couldn't we couldn't fill the spot. So you you are doing a great job, really. Thanks. Thanks for doing that. Oh, no, thanks necessary. It's uh, it's my job. But, <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, You're awesome. <laughs> um, it's it's an honor. I'll put it that way. Uh, it really is, and uh, uh, it, it's really driven like the last three or four years of my life to be able to to find these uh, families and honor these heroes. Um, so. With that, I'll close and thank you for your time. Hopefully I'll see you on May 1st, if not then, May 9th, six o'clock. Uh, I would consider maybe doing one in person soon. It's time. So uh, look for that. In a couple of weeks, I'll make a decision and then I'll get the word out through Irene. So uh, again, thanks for your time. We'll see you later. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, have a good one. Yes.